Let's get this show on the road. I hope everybody having a good day today. Hope everybody having a joyful day today because I'm having a joyful day today. Let's start the day off with this. We're going to talk about three things you can do right now to get more clients other than advertising. Now, if you are a member of Flash Home Academy, you know how we get down. So you probably know these things because these are the things that we talk about. We talk about these three things. We make sure we talk a lot about these three things because these three things are things that are very important. So let's get to it. First, you know, we got to do, we got to roll the intro, we got to roll the graphics and welcome you all for joining today's podcast. Let's do that. You're listening to Content and Cash, a Flash Film Academy podcast. If you want to learn how to take pretty pictures, this is not the place. But if you're ready to make a living by learning the business behind the camera, buckle up because it's time to turn passion into profit with your host, Ty Turner. What's really good if this is your first time on this channel, this channel right here is designed to help content creators understand the business side of content creation. We make sure you get your bag, folks. That's what we do. And this is brought to you by our Capture and Convert Kit, which is about to pop up here pretty loud. But it's available for free at flashfromacademy.com. All right? Let me ask that everybody hit that like button. If you're watching, whatever platform you're watching on, everywhere. That's the loud part. I warned you about it. I, I'm on every platform right now. If you're on Twitter, if you're on TikTok, if you're on Instagram, Facebook, hit that like button. We're just going to pause and give you a second to do that because what I'm going to give you today should make you some money if you do it right. That's what we're going to do. First and foremost, if you're not a member at Flash Home Academy, these are things that we talk about at Flash Home Academy. If these things are of value to you, I just want you to know what you're missing. If you're not a member, it's less than a dollar a day. Okay, let's talk about it. Let me punch you in the throat real quick on three things that you can do right now to get more clients. Let's start with number three, and it's something that has been a gold mine that I don't understand why more people don't talk about it, don't do it. And look, for this to work, you have to have a niche. You can't be Mr. I do everything. There is no place to find people who need some of everything. There is no place for that. You gotta, you gotta find, you gotta have a niche to play this game. First off. So number three, the, the number three thing you can do, and if you post where you're from, I love to see what people from post where you're from. I definitely want to see where you're from. Um, the number three thing that you need to do right now is you need to search for local corporate events to attend. You need to find local corporate events. I cannot stress to you how much money I've made from going to local corporate events. And I'm gonna give you one, I'm gonna give you a little bonus on that because I'm gonna be real with you. Let's say you're, you, you work with service-based companies and there's a plumbing event coming up for plumbers. There's always events for business owners in big cities, sometimes in small cities. There's always events for company owners. You're just, you don't look for them because that's not what you do. You're not in that world. If you're not a T Taylor Swift fan, you don't know when her concert is. I guarantee you it's been in your area 20 times and you have no idea because you're not a fan of, you're not a Swifty. Sucks for you. Anyway, telling on myself. So you want to make sure that you are looking for conferences in your area because conferences are gold mines especially depending on what market you service. Now, let me tell you a bonus because I would much rather spend $300 to get a booth at one of these conferences to talk to business owners who are there to learn more about growing their business than, than just to attend. I would rather spend $300 to have a booth than to spend $300 on Google for ads and marketing. Because everybody that walked past my desk is a potential client. I want a business card from everybody. So 
it's one thing you definitely want to do. You want to find these events. There are tons of events in your area that go on in hotels and conference rooms that you know nothing about that are designed to attract your target audience. Again, if you don't know who your target audience is, you probably definitely need to be a member over at Flash Home Academy. Let's be real. If you're doing this and you don't know who you're doing it for, you got a big problem. Something's not right. You're not doing this business thing right. You need to come see us over at Flash Room Academy. Let's be real. If you just want to shoot pictures for somebody and you don't know who that somebody is, you got a lot of questions you need to answer before we get to the point of putting you or putting the right type of client in front of you. Every Everybody ain't good. Um, let's get to number two. Because um, I think it's number two is, an, it should be a no-brainer, but it's not. I have to remember that it's not a no-brainer. Number two is find local Facebook groups or online gatherings. There's a lot of online spots that business owners meet. I guarantee you for every, every group you're in for drama or every group you're in on Facebook for your favorite TV show, there are groups for people who use these tools to make money. Everybody not using social media to be entertained. Some people use it to connect with others and make money. Some people use it to grow their business. Some people use it to gain more knowledge, to take their business to the next level. Everybody's not here to gossip about rat beef all day. There are groups that are local to where you are that are dedicated to the business owners in your area, specifically in a, in a demographic. There are a group of plumbers in your area that meet online and talk about plumber issues. You need to infiltrate that group and offer slight, small suggestions or offer your services or say, hey, we, you know, we, we're here to help. That's a gold mine. It's a gold mine for business for, to, to, gain, to gain the trust of business owners. Don't go there and spam it. Go there and be helpful. Go there and look out for people who say, hey, I'm having a problem marketing. What are you guys doing? Hey, I'm having a problem with my website. I would like another video. Look for the problems and provide a cinematic solution. That is what we do. We provide cinematic solutions. That's what we do. We provide joy to all with a cinematic solution. That's what we're about. Um, last but not least, and I'm just going to be real with you, and this is something that is, is mind-blowing because I talk to content creators daily and I scratch my head at the fact that they don't do this. Walk your ass in the front door. Walk in the front door. Go meet a gatekeeper. Be friends with that gatekeeper. Don't, don't be discouraged because you can't meet a decision maker who can say yes to your half-assed project right there on the spot and cut you a check. It don't work like that. It never worked like that. Only people who've never done business thinks it works like that. Only people who've never been in that position thinks it works like that. You don't just walk in and shake somebody's hand like it's 1920 and, and do a deal like that. It didn't work like that. You need to develop a relationship with the gatekeepers. Let the gatekeepers sell your stuff. Let the gatekeepers sway the business owner because the business owner trusts the gatekeeper more than some random guy standing in their lobby. I love gatekeepers. I butter them up. I bring them gift cards and baskets. I remember their favorite snack. I butter them up. And you know what gatekeepers do? They keep me in top of mind with the business owner every single time. I'm cool as hell with the gatekeepers. That's who I really want to network with because that's who really run the show. The gatekeepers. The business owner is so much, they're so busy with other stuff. That the gatekeepers is the, is the person you want to be friend. The business owner don't have time to be your friend. The business owner don't have time to be your friend. The gatekeeper do. So bring joy to the gatekeeper. Bring a lot of joy to the gatekeeper. Make them happy. Make them smile. And they will get you, get you in the door. They will keep hounding the owner until you get in. Now let's talk about what not to do. Because I got two what not to do's. And I think it's important. Do not go to a networking event. 
a networking event, I'm not going to say don't go to one. I'm saying this is not the place for clients. Let me, let me specify that. This is not the place for clients. And let me tell you why. A networking event is great for a bunch of hungry people. Hungry people can't spend top dollar on content. They're not in a position to. They're hungry just like you. They're not here to find somebody to spend top dollar for content. And let me break it down for you. Let me make it make sense for you. Have you ever seen your friends and family post online that they needed a plumber or something on Facebook? Have you ever seen people say they need something on Facebook? Do anybody know it's such and such on Facebook? We've all seen it. The unspoken rule is they don't want it done right. They want it done cheap. What they're really asking is, do you know somebody who do it cheap or got a hookup? Because there's too many directories to find the people that do what you need done for you to be going to Facebook, posting a status, waiting 20 minutes for your friends to chime in. Nobody who posts a problem on Facebook really need it solved. Not as far as their status. They don't really need it solved right. They need it solved cheap. Those aren't the people we're going after. We're going after business owners who are trying to find the best people to solve their problem. Those are always your best paying customers. Those are always your clients for life. They're not concerned with cost. They're concerned with fixing the problem. They're not looking for the hookup, hand, handouts. They ain't trying to work with homeboy who going to do this and do that and because he cheap. No, they're looking to get it done right. You don't need a lot of them clients to make six figures. You need about eight per year and you're good. So you find those clients in groups. You, fly, you find those clients in conferences. You find those clients by becoming a trusted friend of their gatekeeper. You find those clients in those places. You don't find those clients at networking events. Now, if you're talking about a BNI or a group of business owners that come together, that's completely different because they pay a premium to get into that. They pay the cost to be there. That's completely different than a random networking event with, you know, hors d'oeuvres and stuff. It's, that's a bunch of hungry people in one place trying to find somebody that's somewhere to eat. It don't work like that. Doesn't work like that. Um, another thing what not to do. Oh, we got Canada in the house. That's what's up. And Albuquerque. Um, another thing not to do. It's cold calling or cold emailing. That's dead. You're not going to call somebody out of the blue. And, and you're not going to land a big deal over the phone. Now, when I say you're not going to do it, do I, do I mean it's a 0% chance? No. It's a 99.5% chance you're not going to do it. Has it happened? Absolutely it's happened. Everything I've told you not to do, there are times when it's happened. There are times where it ha it's happened, but for the majority, I want to set you down a path where things are more likely to happen, where it's, I want to set you down an easier path. Go find a conf. If you work with roof roofers, let's say you are, you create content for roofers, find a roofing uh, conference in your area. Find a roofing conference in your area. I guarantee you it would be nothing but dollar signs walking around that conference. I guarantee you it'll be nothing but, but dollar signs. Okay, let me give you another bonus. Let me give you another bonus because I think there's another place, another bonus here that I've discovered. And look, usually we save these for Flash Home Academy. This is the inside scoop. But I'm going to give you a little bit now because if you've never done this, it's proof as to why you need to be a member. Right. Develop relationships with con with their contractors. Right. Roofing companies have contractors. Corporate event companies have contractors. Right. Develop a relationship with their contractors. Let me say what I mean by this. I'm going to tell you one of my most profitable relationships ever was was with a relationship I, I developed with a company that rented stages. Sounds crazy, right? Let me, let, me, let me explain it. For corporate event photography and corporate event highlight videos or whatever, 
I developed a relationship with a company that rented out the stages that they stand on. Didn't know this was a thing. Never heard of it until the guy shook my hand and just kind of chopped it up about what he did. He rented stages and he rented stages to all the hotels in the area. Um, he rented stages to a lot of corporate event planners to have outdoor events. Or sometimes there are uh, people who are in the company who are assigned with creating the event and they need to rent a stage so that they can hold an event within their facility. Sometimes there was a time I shot a corporate event that was in the middle of a, a manufacturing plant and they just cleared out some space put a stage, chairs, drapes, and curtains, and they had an event space. So my relationship with that stage rental company, which I, again, I never thought was a thing, turned into five figures worth of work over, over a year, easily. Simply because I networked with a contractor who's, who also works in my area. So develop relationships with contractors. Well, how do I do this, Ty? I'm going to give you two ways. One, you can walk in the door. You can walk in the door, look up companies that rent out these things, find out where they're marketing or who they're working with, because they're big warehouses full of companies that rent chairs. You need to know that. That's one. And number two, this is where I kind of say you can use your own, you get high off your own supply. When next time you do an event, let's say an events is your thing, get pictures of the caterer, get their card, get pictures of the company that's setting things up, get their card, get pictures of the, of the, the company that's bringing the flowers, get their card, give them the picture. I never, I don't like giving out my card. I like getting people card. I like being in charge of who, when we connect. I don't give out my card. I want your car. I want to call you. Victor Harris said he visited rental out companies last week. Absolutely. Absolutely. So make sure you are, there's back doors to this. Like everybody think there's one way to do this. They think I'm just going to build a website and just market. And if my work's good, the business come, it don't work like that. It's too, the market is, I'm not going to say the market is too saturated, but because of the internet, you now have to compete with everybody. It's not that it's saturated. 50 years ago, you just had to knock out your zip code. And you good. 50 years ago, you needed a storefront and the people around you who never left their city work with you. Nowadays, you got to compete with, with, all, with every photographer within a 200-mile range. Hell, some national. So it's not that it's saturated. It's just that the, the, the client has more options. And we need to make sure we're always the best option, not the cheapest option. If, you, if you're trying to be the cheap option, then you don't understand business. If you're trying to be the cheap option, that was the wrong button. If, you, if you're trying to compete with price, you don't get it. And that's why you, you, gonna, you cannot recover from being the cheap guy. I said it once. I'll say it again. There's no way to recover. You can't charge a client. $50 today and come back and say it's 2000 next time. It don't work like that. It don't matter what you add. They didn't, they didn't come in the game. That's bait and switch. They, you, they didn't come in the game that way. So, you know, you got, those are things you got to think of. You got to be mindful of companies have multiple brands for that reason. They have Cadillac and Chevy and they have it for that. They, they create a whole different brand because even a billion dollar company cannot recover from being the cheap guy. Look at Kia right now. Look at Kia. They can't recover from being the cheap guy. They'll just make a higher brand. What do they make? Or look at Hyundai. Hyundai is a great example of Hyundai and Genesis. Same brand. Hyundai cannot sell a high end car to save his life. And a Genesis is literally the same thing. But they had to create a different brand because they cannot recover from being the cheap guy. And you may have never bought a Hyundai, Hyundai in your life, but you instantly know it's the cheap car. You know you're not going to spend a lot with Hyundai, no matter what they give you. And they give you better cars than a lot of higher-end cars like Mercedes. The lower-end Mercedes are not better than the higher-end Hyundais, but cost more. It's just that you perceive Mercedes as a better brand and you're willing to spend more for a sticker, for a emblem. 
The same goes in fashion. Louis Vuitton don't make anything that is more durable than Levi. You know what? Let's go down, Wrangler. If you had to work in the cold and you had to find working pants, it ain't a pair of Lou, it ain't a pair of Gucci pants you would pick over some Wranglers. It ain't a pair of fashion, high fashion Valenciagas you would pick as far as work boots and stuff over Wranglers and Red Wings and whatever you choose to work in. Because fashion makes you makes people feel better about themselves because they have a logo or a brand. Because they've built a brand to get $300 for one t-shirt. Where Hangs built a brand to sell three t-shirts for $20. There's no way Hangs can put out a higher value shirt. It's very rare do it happen. I'll give you an example of a time it happened. It was Champion. But they died and went away and came back. Champion used to be the clothes you wear and you got talked about when I was in school. And then the kids brought it back and they brought out Supreme and yada, yada, yada. But if you showed up with a champ shirt, your mama couldn't afford Nike. Facts. We was roasting you. We was lighting you up. You, you, you would wear that shirt inside out. So we would, we would definitely get you. But anyway, real quick, let me go over these three things before we slide out. Cause I don't want to keep y'all here all day. You know, Tuesdays I like to come and I like to punch you in the throat. And I like to keep it moving. So here go three things you can do right now to get more clients. Some of them free. Some of them not. A lot of conferences are free. So number three, search for local conferences um, in your area. Now, there is a website, Upcoming Cons, UPs, Upcoming C-O-N-S, cons.com is one, Eventbrite. I'm going to say you can get on Google. Whenever you search on Google, it show you all the events. Um... I'm going to get to your question in a second, Sam. Sam asked a good question. That's number one. Search for conferences. There are, I'm telling you, there, there are so many conferences in your area, especially if, you, if you're anywhere where there's a lot of hotels. If you're around big hotels that got conference rooms, there are so many conferences every day. There were conferences in American Airline Arena. That's what it maps play. That were for smaller companies that I knew nothing about. That they were renting out smaller sections in the in the whole arena. There are conferences, conference spaces everywhere. Find these places. Find out what conferences are coming there. You can, and a lot of times, if you live in the world, again, you gotta have a target audience. You gotta have a niche. You gotta have a target audience. Whatever your target audience is, you gotta live in their world. Let me get, let me just break it down. Let's 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 make it. Let's just make it like dummy easy. Let's make it simple, stupid, as they call it in the military. Because I'm not going to give it all away. You got to be a member to get the rest. If I wanted to sell Legos or a Lego-like toy, hypothetically, right? Th that's my niche. My niche is Lego toys, builder blocks. Let's say I'm, I'm creating a unique builder block for kids. That's just saying that's what I'm doing. And I'm just using this because we all can relate to it. Um, that's my product. Well, who is my ideal audience? My target audience are kids between the ages of what and what. We, we, we know you want to be at least five or six because they become choking hazards when they're too little. So I know my ideal audience is between six and 18, hypothetically, for Legos. It go bigger than that, but whatever, right? Now that I have my niche, I've identified who my target audience is. Well, where did my target audience look for new toys? Probably, probably cartoon commercials, probably toy stores, probably, you know what I'm saying? Wherever, YouTube. Okay, so I know where to be. You see how I'm building out the equation as to how I'm getting business? With your brand and your company, it's that, it's that easy if you understand how to, how to reverse engineer it. Now I know I can go on here and look and find Lego conventions in my area. They are, there are Lego conventions. There are toy conventions. They are builder conventions. There is a ton of stuff for people who like to build things with toys. There's a thousand conventions a year on that. If I am selling a product that appeal to that audience, I either need to go to that convention or get a booth at that convention, or you can contact the convention just to buy the email list. 
Just to market with them. There's so many different ways to do it that don't cost as much as you think. Now that I've identified those things, I know how to move forward and going after them. So number one, and 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 also let me say it again. I'm also I'm living in a world where I'm up, I'm I'm in the magazines, I'm watching the YouTube video. I know what's what's going on. There's no way you would have knew about NAB had you not followed a camera channel. Only camera channels talk about NAB in Vegas every year. There's no way you would know about it. But this is what you're into. So you know about conferences that the average person don't know exist. So that's what I'm saying. You you should be doing the same. You should be learning about the same things for your target audience. And when doing so, you should get involved with those conferences, even if you got to travel. So what? Spend the money. Go travel. Go learn about it. Go shake hands. Do it. So number, number, number three, we're going to start with number three is find local corporate events that your target audience are interested in. Number two, find local, 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 local Facebook groups and online gathering. They got to be local. I mean, you can find some in other areas if you're interested in just learning, but there are local groups of plumbers, local groups of dentists, local groups of home builders, local groups of corporate event planners in your area on Facebook. It's not going to pop up because you're not one of them. Go look for it. Find it. Join it. Infiltrate it. Be a part of the solution on that page. Don't go blasting. But when somebody asks a question about how to grow the audience, you should be there. You should definitely be there. This, these are things that are very important. Last but not least, walk your butt in the door. Do not cold call. Do not cold email. Go shake some hands. Because we live in such a technology-based world, a real-life interaction is very valuable. Younger people don't want to interact in real life. Older people appreciate the interaction in real life. And we're still at the point in time where more older people own stuff than younger people right now. More Gen X, you know, early millennials and older baby boomers are the owners that you want to reach with these ideas and to create this content. So you they they appreciate a handshake. They appreciate eye contact and a firm handshake. They appreciate that. So you need to understand that. Last but not least, or that, that is last but not least, but what not to do, don't go to networking events looking for business. It's just a bunch of hungry people looking for soup. I'm not saying you can't get nothing out of it, but the chances of you finding somebody who need content at a networking event, are they really looking to solve their problem or are they looking for somebody cheap? I don't want to work with people that's looking for somebody cheap. I don't want to work with, I don't want to work with clients that want it done cheap. I want to work with clients that want it done right. There are a lot of them out here. You just got to build a brand that appeal to them and you got to go after them. Good looking out. Good looking out, Rodney. So make sure that you are doing what you got to do. There's a lot of ways to grow your business other than just marketing. Marketing is a layer to this. It's a component to this. So, you know, um, Sam says in your area, have you noticed more marketing companies offering video services? Absolutely. You know why? Because I'm the company that partner with them so that they send all their clients to me. Because just like I said, be friends with their contractors. I walked in the door and shook hands with the marketing company. So all their video comes from me. You're absolutely right. It's happening. Because I'm not going after clients anymore. I'm going after the marketing company and I'm going to let them go after clients. So, yeah, if, if you're smart, you'll go after a marketing company. You may offer wholesale prices to them. They keep your calendar filled. Let's do it. And a lot of them don't really want major discounts. They're getting paid on the marketing. They know that creating content is a part of the bill. They know that the client's going to pay for it. I, a majority of my clients are marketers and we show up and shoot. That's why you see me shooting different stuff because they'll go after local companies. A lot of my clients are website designers. In fact, I just got a, I just got an email today from a website designer that's working with a company that need a list of video for the company. And it's a bunch of video and photos 
for a company because they've been hired to design a website. And whatever this web designer say, hire these guys so we can get the images we, can, we need right because they do it right, that company is going to hire me. They're not going to think twice about it. So those are the, the relationships you should be developing. You don't have to go directly to the client. You can develop the relationship with the contractor. Keep that in mind. These relationships are valuable. If you don't have the money to spend $2,000 a month on marketing, you need to get off your ass and you need to go get it. You need to do the research. So you need to do that. Big shout out. Big shout out to Jersey. So you need to go. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. And, and at Flash Film Academy, listen. Let me post that on there one more time. Listen, we, I understand that everybody don't come from a boatload of money. I understand that everybody don't have a big network of family full of dentists and lawyers that they can tap on and say how to do this or, you know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. I'm the same way. I had to build it from the ground up. I had to read. I had to learn. I had to understand how to maneuver in certain rooms. I get it. Totally understand. You, you plan on being first generation wealth. To do that, you got to do things that you wouldn't normally do. You got to learn the next level. You can't just assume you're going to get it. You can't assume that it's going to just come to you. You can't assume that if you keep doing what you did, you're going to do something different. One of the greatest quotes I ever heard in life said, if you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. There's very few quotes that I remember like that, that changed my life, that made me sit back and look around and be like, damn, I've been doing the same thing for years, hoping for a different result. I've been doing the same thing for years, thinking that if I get good at it, if I grind, the results will change. And that's not true. You can do it faster. It ain't going to change. You got to change this. There are things you have to do differently to get to the places you want to get. And it start with this. It don't start with your gear. Another great quote was, do life happen to you or do you happen to life? There's a lot of people that are victims in their own life. They're victims in their own story. They always got bad luck. They always some wrong. People are always messing with them. They always, they're always the victim. They, didn't, they never take control and say, this is where I'm going with this. They never, they never grab life by the horns and, and, and control it. They're always, they're go with the flow. I don't like go with the flow type people. I am the flow. I control it. I'm not a go with the flow type of person. I'm a go get it type of person. And to be a successful business owner, you got to go get it. And it's going to be hard at first. It's going to be uncomfortable at first. But the upside of owning a business is the ability to work smarter, not harder, and, and live, live the way you want to live. And if you're not going after it, don't complain about what you got, because I don't want to hear it. The guys that are going after it, us over here that's knocking on doors, that's getting doors slammed in our face and getting rejected every day so we can get that one win, we don't want to hear about how you're a victim. You chose that. Everything in life, you chose it, whether consciously or subconsciously. You chose it. You are exactly where you deserve to be. You got exactly what you deserve to get. The world don't owe you anything. As my mother would tell me, the world don't owe you nothing. Go get it. So I encourage you to get up and go get it. That's all I got, folks. Hope y'all have a joyful day. Hope everything good. I hope, I hope I've given you something that you can use. I hope I've given you something that will help grow your business, kickstart your business, make you some money, give you the drive or motivation or vision that you need to go and make money with this camera. Because in 2024, if you're not making money with your camera, you are literally starving to death in a grocery store. I, what I want you to do is I want you to walk to your house and I want you to count every screen you got. Every screen you got. Every, if you got more than two, it's all the proof you need. Every content is the new crack. And every single screen you got in your house is a crack pipe.
Every single screen you in your house is a crack pipe. So you got to change how you think about it. Um, you know, True24 says, I know you read a lot, or at least used to. What books uh, that really made a difference in your business? Uh, quite a few. I'm still reading. I'm, I, I got a book. I'm an audible king. Like, I got a... I, Okay, so let me say this before I go. Let me say this. You are what you eat, right? And I'm a, it's going to be a throat punch. I'm just, let me just be real with you. It's going to hurt. It's only so much ass shaking and shooting and killing music I can listen to before it rubs off on you. Like, you got to understand that it will rub off on you. All the negative music about getting your heart broke and he cheating and she did that and all this rap beef and stuff that you digest will rub off on you. Like you are what you what you consume. Look, like just look at your life. What what did you look at today, entertainment wise? Did you look at beef all day? Did you look at who going through a divorce? Did you look at the worst part of politics? Like, did you spend all day living in drama world? Now you want something good to happen? It don't work like that. What? How do you think you're gonna get something great out of a life of consuming drama and gossip and stuff? How do you how do you think you're gonna grow in a life full of entertainment? No, it don't work like that. You have to you have to digest things that will help you. So I'm always reading a book. If I'm listening to a podcast, I'm always listening to a podcast to help me think outside of the box. Because the difference between where you are now and you being filthy rich is something so stupid and minute that, that you don't, like you're literally tied to a lawn chair and you don't understand. You just, you don't get it. It's, it's the box that you're in is such a thin box. You're just afraid to get out of that box and you just, you don't understand you have the power to get out of that box. I got a tie list. Good looking out, Media Smith. So I got a tie list with a bunch of books that I've read and I love. One of my favorites that I always talk about is End of Jobs. End of Jobs was a throat punch, especially if you read it before COVID, because it predicted everything that changed after COVID. It said it'll take some time to happen, and COVID sped it up. As far as working remote, going to a gig economy, or getting away from people hiring people for long periods of time, they want you just on projects. So definitely check out Ty's list at flashfromacademy.com. Um, definitely do that. But with that being said, I ain't going to keep y'all all day. I'll see y'all next time. All right? Have a joyful day. You've been listening to Content and Cash, a Flash Film Academy podcast. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and go to our webpage at www.flashfilmacademy.com.